and we're recording. In this video I'd like to introduce the idea of version control to you. Um, some of you who've worked in companies will no doubt have used version control before and uh, some of you who are students may have used this in other units but not everyone has and it's a really very important part of how software developers, software engineers work with each other. And I'm going to try to introduce it fairly quickly from first principles. And the first principle I want to introduce is that for software development, the changes we make are discrete. Now, let me explain uh, what I mean by that with a very simple demo in a made up language. So here I have a program in an imaginary language that looks somewhat like Scala. And at this stage, it just says I've got this function and it's called twice and it takes a parameter called a and it says that the result is two times a and as it stands that compiles and that works. Suppose I just want to change this program by adding another function that says that thrice a is three times a. As soon as I start typing my program won't compile anymore. That's no longer syntactically correct and I keep typing a little bit more and it still won't compile, won't compile and I get to this point and now it'll compile but it's wrong. Thrice A isn't 3, thrice A is 3 times A and so I do a little bit more typing and eventually I get to a new stage that compiles and works. So I took something that was working to start with and to introduce my new functionality I had to do a whole bunch of editing that broke it uh, to get to a new state that works. Now that's a really trivial example in a single file where you might not even click save until you've done it. But this is also true for larger changes across multiple files. You might, for example, need to change the definition of a function in one place, add a parameter to it or something like that, and then go through the rest of the code base uh, altering wherever that function is called. And so this is, for instance, one of the reasons why um, we don't just put all our code in a shared folder. We don't just collaborate the way that you might collaborate with a collaborative document editor with everyone typing at once. Um, because, for instance, suppose there I am and I'm working on this project and suppose this is my timeline working on the project and the green bits are where my code is working and the red bits are where I'm working on things but it's not quite working yet I haven't quite got that new feature in there and then the green bit next green bit yes now now it's working again oh except it doesn't do quite what I want yet I, I need to do a little bit more editing and there's another red bit where it's broken but I'm not the only person working on this project and so suppose here's my colleague and she's also working on this this project and here is her timeline of working on her features and the green bits are where it's working and the red bits are where she's still editing things and it's in a broken state. Well if we were editing in the same folder, if we were sharing our changes all of the time then well that would happen and the code would spend all its time broken she wouldn't know if the code wasn't working because of her change or because of my change. It would become impossible to debug what we were doing and really quite frustrating. So for software developers in industry, there is a little bit of a catch cry of don't break the build. Uh, one of the things we really don't want to do is break stuff underneath someone and stop them from being able to work because we've broken things. And so if you like, instead of our changes being continuous, instead I'd like you to imagine it as you have a starting state where everything's fine, everything's kind of working, it might not do what you want yet, but it, it does something, uh, it compiles, it behaves. Uh, you know, to start with, for instance, the program does precisely nothing, but it, 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 do, it doesn't throw lots of compiler errors. And we progress through some brokenness to a new state and we want to share that new working snapshot uh, but we don't want to change uh, want to share the brokenness that's in the middle and we call these snapshots that are successful and working and that we would like to share the goodness that we want to share we call those commits those are the stages where yep everything's in order i can share this now and we call the 
changes that are made to trans uh, to you know morph the code base from its previous state to the new state the things that we're adding the things that we're changing the things that we're taking away that's the change set and this is what version control helps us to manage now at this point i would like to give you five problems to motivate you as to why you might need version control now uh, the first one i want to uh, give you is the problem of reversion I'm about to make some changes to some code and okay I think I'm a pretty good developer but this is a bit of a tricky feature that I'm implementing and well what if it turns out that the change I'm about to make isn't any good what if the you know I, I'm about to set to putting in a particular feature and then I discover halfway through no that can't work how can I undo those changes how can I go back to the last state that I had that was good and working. Uh, another one, change control. Um, last night, the code base was in a particular state. Um, this morning, my colleague comes along and says, oh, stuck in a whole bunch of great new features last night. It's brilliant. There's a big code base and I'm kind of thinking, okay, now what's changed? What bits did they just add in? What things, um, aren't quite how they were or worse last night when I went to bed everything was working this morning I've got up I walked into the office I've uh, tried to use the system and it's it's broken it's all a mess nothing's working what changed who changed it because I'd you know, like to find out why they broke everything too um, next one I'd like to give you branching so there you are as a software developer or a technology company building wonderful, wonderful software and you managed to sell a copy to Algernon who paid you a nice high price for it. And then um, you go along and Bertie says, well, I would like, to, I'd like to buy your product, but it doesn't quite have what I need in it. I need this extra feature before I'm willing to buy it. And so you go, OK, right, let's go and implement that new feature. And you want to roll it out. And Algernon says, no, 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 don't don't go change the code on me. I'm perfectly happy with what I've got. Thank you. I don't want you upgrading me to the next version. We're, we're, we're on version 1.5 and that's just fine for us. Stop causing us trouble. We'll have to retrain all our users if we if we go and stick your 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 new fangled Bertie feature in there. And so there you are as a software vendor and suddenly thinking, great, now I have to maintain the version I sold to Elgernon as well as developing the new feature to sell to Bertie. Uh, because though Elgernon doesn't want Bertie's feature, when he finds something's broken, you know, there's some bug or some other thing he wants doing, he's going to want that improved or fixed in the version that he's got. So now you've, you, you've forked your code base. You've got two different versions that you're having to maintain. Uh, merging. Some time later, Aldenon comes back and says, you know what, actually I was talking to Berkety, that feature looked quite good, can you give it to me? And now Aldenon wants some of the stuff I did for Bertie too, and somehow I have to merge all those changes I made for Bertie into the version I've given to Aldenon. Patching. Cecily, brilliant person. Fabulous. Great to work with Cecily. It doesn't even work for our company, but, you know, one of our uh, partner companies. And you know what? She's gone and worked out how to fix that bug that's been stumping our development team for ages. And she's just said that she wants to send us the code. She doesn't want to send us the whole, you know, here's the entire zip of the entire project with it fixed. She just wants to tell, send us the little tweak that will fix that bug in our code base. All right, so that's five problems to motivate why version control matters for software production. Um, let's go back to the first one I suggested, reversion. And um, the way I'm going to map it out is uh, essentially version control is like a directed acyclic graph. Uh, so if you recall, I was saying that we have snapshots of our code in working states and then we have changes that we make to produce more snapshots of our code in working states. And so if you can imagine, we might start off and, um, you know, I, I, I've got my code in a working state and I keep committing new features and I go and break one. Blast. That one there wasn't so good. What can I do? Well, it's a little bit different if we've done a commit or not. If we've shared our code and we found out it doesn't work, if we've put the commit in there, 
then we tend to like history to keep going forwards. So what we do isn't to demolish that commit that's got the X on it. Instead, what we do is we say, well, we would like the next stage in our development to actually put the code back into the last working state. So what I would like to do is take that version there and let's have a new commit that reverts the change. And so time still keeps going forward, but our code gets back into the fixed state. And if you can imagine, that set of uh, the snapshots and the changes, that gives us the history of our code base. And uh, as we do these commits, we can um, put comments in, uh, commit messages, to say what we were doing. So we might start with the initial revision, and then I added a shiny new feature, and then I added a colourful new feature, and then, oh, I had a brilliant idea, and I added that, and then I reverted my not-so-brilliant idea. And that produces our log of the version history of the changes to our code, and it's uh, often called the change log.